Well, Just in case some of you don't know this, Lydia has been the director of marketing for Black Bear Records for the past two years. So she's worked with uh, with uh, John and I. And uh, but as you can see, she's getting close to her due date. So I was worried about her coming out here today because I didn't want to have to deliver her any babies. But she's good and she looks beautiful, y'all. So. Make sure that it is registered 
with your PRO. What that means is you sign in to your account and you add a new song. You put the title, you put the writers, however many writers there are, uh, what their full legal name is, what the splits are, meaning the percentages for each writer. So if you have two writers, uh, the rule of thumb is to split it equal ways. So you're 50 50. And if there's three writers, you split it three ways, and so on. And that way, everybody knows who owns what, and it doesn't get messy. So it's great to have everything in writing. Anytime, uh, if you're writing by yourself, then it's great. You own it all. You own 100% of everything. And if you're writing with somebody else and you're splitting it, that's great. Just have anything in writing so that you're both in agreement. If that song takes off, then it's already registered, good to go, and you don't have to scramble to get those things together. Um, a great way to do that is to have a split sheet, which is basically like a one-page sheet of your name, your publishing company, who owns the splits of the song, and if you do want to change those percentages, you can, but it's just kind of a little thumb to split it equal ways. And so having that signed off, dated, is the legal way to do that. Keep it in a folder, keep it on your computer, and then you have what you need when it comes time to uh, put it on your PRO. Um, so, let's see, I also wanted to mention that this publishing information is something that you'll use when you're copywriting your song. So, if you are getting ready to put out an album, you'll need to put these on your PRO list, on your catalog, and also give the copyright office your publishing information. And if you already have the splits from all the writers, then you'll know that at the time of copyright. And very end going to be talking about copywriting next. So it kind of all goes together. This is just another step of the process that I didn't realize for a long time. I was writing songs, but I wasn't putting them on a catalog of ASCAP until more recently. And so it actually is pretty easy. Once you've signed up, you can log in and add any new songs to your catalog. And once you sign up, you don't have an annual fee. It's just a one-time fee to be a member, but you have the ongoing benefits of that. And so um, I want to talk about how the PRO collects your royalties. BMI actually has a BMI Live, where you can go in and you can put in your live performances. So if you're playing gigs and playing your own songs, you can put your set list in there and get paid for every song that's your original that you're performing and you get paid a performance royalty. And where that comes from is the venues that are doing a blanket license to have live music, they pay a fee and then it goes into this big pool where they pull the royalties from. And so you just have to go in and claim it. And how you claim it is through your PRL so they know where to send it. So I want to encourage you to do that if you are gigging, if you're playing festivals, coffee shops, restaurants, bars, anywhere that you would be performing your music live, you can put every single gig on there and have your set list. So if you're doing a half hour set or an hour set or a three hour set, you've got original songs in there, you're gonna be putting that in and you're gonna be getting paid more for that than you will for digital streams or for um, some of those other royalties. So we need to know about that. Who paid Who pay that? The PRO collects it for you and then you're, it's your responsibility to claim it. It all goes into this big pool of money, yeah. and whatever's not claimed within a certain amount of time, I think it's three years or five years, then it just goes to the big record companies, whatever song. Yeah, I mean, so, if they get that money, so you're playing a, a copy house, if they go get the money from the copy house? Yes, they have, they have to have a blanket license for any live music, but it's your responsibility as the writer or as the performer to claim it and say, I played this show at this time, it was this song and then they know where to send the royalties. So that's live performance royalties. And you can do that anytime you're performing your song live. Uh, it's been my experience, I'm a BMI artist, but it's pretty much my experience with BMI. So you can be working three to six months in the room, so don't expect money on performance today. Right, yeah, I can take it as quarterly payouts for that. So that as soon as you can get it in there, it's good. I'm gonna go on a monthly basis and say, hey, I've played these 10 gigs this month, and then three months later, you'll see the room. Uh, the yeah, it'll just come rolling in. Right? Um, so the, the whole thing I think a lot of people miss is just like those little things of checking in, keeping things organized, knowing who wrote the song, telling them I wrote this song, I performed it in this time. And I mean, if you're 
working with a company that's doing that, they'll be doing all the admin stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have somebody doing that, it's up to you. Amen. And if you don't know about it, then you don't know what you don't know. So that's why I wanted to tell you that as a songwriter, uh, if you're taking this seriously, you want to get paid for your music, then this admin part is really important. So one thing you need to do before you're publishing is to join a PRO, whichever one of these is great. Uh, there's also CSAC, but it's invitation only. I'm not a CSAC writer, so I can't get you in. If you know somebody, they can maybe invite you. Uh, but it's just a different process with them. So I would recommend ASCAP or BMI, just keep it simple. Uh, either or one of those are great, and they do the same thing. So you don't need both of those. So you want to make sure we're not missing anything here. Uh, yeah, there are different royalties as a writer. So if you have a songwriter royalty for any time your song is playing on the radio, any time somebody's uh, recording it, you get a mechanical license for that, mechanical royalty, but that's not what PROs collect. And then you also have an artist royalty. If you are the artist as well, you can collect that additional royalty. And being the owner of the recording copyright, those two, the artist and recording copyright, you get those collected through sound exchange. It's free to join Sound Exchange, but those are separate royalties. What a PRO does is collect the writing royalties and the publishing royalties. So I just want to make sure you're getting paid all of those streams of things. So if you've got your music that's being played on the internet radio or being played on radio, or if an artist has cut your song, then there are different royalties for different things. And a lot of times, Sound Exchange. Yes. So you can go to soundexchange.com and sign up for free. And you go in and claim any recordings that are yours. So you can just search the artist's name, find those recordings, claim it, and you get the artist royalty if you're the artist, and the recording copyright owner royalty if you own the master recording. So if you're the independent artist doing this, if you haven't signed those things away to other people, then you own it. So that's another way that you can get paid as the artist to help uh, get more money to put back into your music and to pay your bills and to keep doing this thing because you love it. And so I wanted to give you that information just to help you. And even if one of these things st stands out to you as the next step, I think that's really helpful to just keep moving forward with your music and put it out there. Uh, I would encourage you to keep things organized as much as you can. So anytime you get things in writing, anytime you have a copy of something, uh, then just keep it in a folder where it is. And anytime you write a new song, you can add it to the list of your catalog on the publishing site and make sure that you're collecting from the songs that are out there being played and that are working for you. So any other questions on performing rights or publishing? Does that cover European market also? I, I think it is worldwide, mm -hmm. yes. At the market box, where <laughs> Mary has said, for worldwide as opposed to just the US.
And so um, I wanted to invite John to come up for a few minutes and uh, answer some yeah, questions. One well. question. I know they're, they're streaming, which is like Pandora, blah, 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 and all that. And then there's brick and mortar radio stations. But then there's streaming, uh, streaming radio stations. Is that the same as a brick and mortar as far as the payment? Uh, it's different. So like, it's like an internet radio station. It, to me, it's different than, say, Pandora. Yeah, they have different rates for online streaming, yeah. so it might be, uh, might be less for an online stream than yeah. like a radio play. Um, so it's just a different, a different well, rate, but... They set the rates. Yeah, they're, they're all different. Um, yeah. The important thing is for it to be registered correctly, so when those things are recorded, like internet radio will report on a monthly or quarterly basis, like what songs they're playing, and what their downloads are like, and then you'll get paid later on. So they report it, then you get paid later, and you'll realize if you look at the breakdown, when you get the royalty payments, it'll say, okay, 0 0.003 cents for this one play on Spotify, or whatever it is. So it's like a fraction of a penny per, per stream, but the thing is, if you have these songs set up correctly, then they will keep track of that, and when something takes off, you'll definitely get paid for that. But if it hasn't been set up where they don't have your address to send you the money, or they don't have your bank account information, or your legal name was typed wrong, or you don't have a publishing company, you're just leaving it on the table. And so the important thing is to have everything set up so all those pennies will add up and be able to be substantial. So does that answer the question? Yeah, everything is kind of a different rate. Uh, this is for PRO, this is for the writer and publishing royalties. And then I also mentioned Sound Exchange. You can sign up for that if you have any recordings out there already, you know to claim those. Uh, for the artist royalties and the sound recording copyright owner royalties. So. <laughs> I find it to be like seven or eight bucks a song if you play them out. Play them in Nashville or something like that. If you play them anyway with like a hundred seats or yeah, something, something like that, like that. you play like a 30 minute set. Yes. Sure. Every, every, and every song is like If you're gigging on the weekends and playing some originals in there, absolutely put those in there and it might add up faster with the live performance royalty than the streaming because of the rates because of how the streaming is. So but if one song gets on a big playlist or a lot of A BMI collects the live performance royalties and any performance royalties on radio or internet radio. The big tech the songwriter royalties. Yes, it should be on the royalty statement. It would have a breakdown of where it's actually coming from. And then if you see a certain thing that's taking off, you can double down and do more of that. So, uh, John, I wanted you to be able to share kind of from your experience with both. He's been a songwriter for a very long time, written with a lot of people, got a lot of songs with different genres, and so, so just different experience. Uh, so you may have questions for John. You need an administrator or you're not going to be paid. A lot of the money will just sit. So you need administration. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that I'm an ASCAP writer. There's ASCAP and BMI, two performing rights society that you went over. Uh, I don't think that personally that there's a great advantage to being a member of either one. I think you'll benefit from either one. Uh, BMI is more popular uh, right now. Uh, probably the NASCAP. Uh, I have an NASCAP publishing company, and if you don't want to deal with publishing, you could talk to me about publishing your material uh, as an ASCAP writer. So if you're signed up for ASCAP, you could publish with me if you chose. If, if you're a BMI writer, choose Kurt. 
because he writes for BMI. Uh, so those are two things that I wanted to share with you. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. This is a very special show right here. So, um, Harry Box will be into the actual, we didn't go over mechanical royalties. That's for the hard physical copy of your CD. If you're selling those, if an artist is selling those at shows and on their website, and that's a hard copy of the CD, Harry Fox collects the mechanical licenses for that. So you can sign up with them as a writer to claim those mechanical royalties. So a few things to look into. You'll need a PRL for the writer and publishing, the sound exchange account to claim your artist royalty and recording copyright, and Harry Fox for mechanical royalties for those hard copies. You have a question? Yeah, yeah, it's questionable. Like BMI, if some other artist or band, whoever is performing a song, do they keep track of who's performing that song? Does BMI do that? BMI, how, how would we how would anybody know yeah. that song is being performed by someone else? Yes, yeah, so um, you as the writer can check in with artists that you know that have cut your song. Uh, because they'll need a mechanical license for that to be able to record it. Um, and then uh, also, usually a manager for a band would be the one that keeps track of the set lists and sends that in. So if, if it's not a band with a manager, then it's up to them to get with the writers or up to the writers to connect with them, maybe on a monthly or quarterly basis. Um, but usually, if it's an artist on a label, they have a manager who keeps track of, of what songs they play at what venue, and you can ask for a copy of that. Does that don't get turned into BMI? Or it's it? supposed to. <laughs> yeah. supposed so to. it's either up to the manager or up to the writers to go and collect that. If it's on a smaller scale, usually you have to go out and ask and check in with them. Um, but you know, once they have a bigger team, there's somebody usually designated to keep track of that and talk for it. Any other questions? Here we go. Also, just to, just to clarify, you know, in America, there are reporting stations. If it's playing on a radio station, that is being that is a reporting station, you will get paid. If they're not a reporting station, then it's going to kill me a little longer. But I really believe over the, overseas in the European market, it's different. Uh, and it's due to an executive bill that was passed by the last administration where they have he, he's forcing them to pay songwriters and uh, singers where before in the past they didn't. And uh, now I'm getting checks that I didn't used to get. So I hope that answers your question, Charlie. Uh, and, and just getting back to what John said and Lydia, you know, if you open a publishing company, it's kind of scary. You go, oh, wow, there's a lot of stuff to this. You know, it's really not as bad as you think. You really should open your own company if you're a songwriter. And look, if you join the companies that Lydia told you to join, sound exchange is huge. You need to join that company. It doesn't cost anything. They'll go after your money. They'll track your money down. And Harry Fox, if you if you don't know anything about publishing company, you don't have any business trying to administer it because you're going to get ripped off. That's why I signed with Harry Fox and people like that who administer poorly. They get 10%. It's worth it. Trust me. Uh, and, and, and then you don't have to worry about it. What you do is you sign your songs over to them, over to Harry Fox, and let them go out there and chase down the money. Makes sense? Yeah.